Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode, and I hope you're all having a great time. SpaceX is planning the third test flight of their Starship in February. According to Space News, they've been hustling to get an updated launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration. But SpaceX is not just sitting around waiting. They've been doing the static fire tests of both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship upper stage. Last time, the Super Heavy Booster was doing fine until it suddenly exploded right after separating from the upper stage. The upper stage, realizing things were going south, activated its flight termination system during the late burn. But now things have been drastically modified. Meanwhile, everyone's eyes then turned to Ship 28, the upper stage of the third starship. It got lifted onto a transport stand, and workers started doing their magic, like removing squid attachment points and sealing stuff with heat tiles. This means Ship 28's only going up by the ports beneath its flaps. It won't hit the test pad again. After all this, it zipped over to the high bay for more work. Now, talking about the orbital tank farm, there's been some serious upgrades. They're replacing the problematic vertical tanks. Originally, SpaceX built their own tanks inspired by Starship tech, but they ran into issues with regulatory approval, especially for methane tanks. So they tweaked their plan, converting some tanks into water storage. After some wear and tear, including damage from Starship launches, it looks like they're moving on from these tanks. They've started scrapping some of the older tanks, but they'll probably keep the stainless steel water tanks for now, as they're crucial for pressurizing other tanks in the farm. However, thanks to the incredible insights from the Ring Watchers, we got to know about Starship's remarkable propulsion system, particularly in its second stage. This stage is equipped with six Raptor engines, three optimized for vacuum conditions, and three for sea level conditions. Starship utilizes two types of cryogenic propellants, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, serving as the fuel and oxidizer, respectively. The Starship is designed with large main tanks for storing these propellants, where the upper tank holds liquid methane and the lower one contains liquid oxygen. These tanks are essential for the ascent phase of the spacecraft's journey. To manage more dynamic maneuvers, such as the landing flip, SpaceX has innovatively positioned two header tanks within the nose cone of the Starship. These tanks become particularly crucial during the spacecraft's belly flop maneuver when the main tank's propellants shift due to the horizontal orientation. The aft dome of the liquid oxygen tank, found at Starship's lower end, has a distinct conical shape to accommodate the different Raptor engines. This dome is strategically designed with multiple holes, six for the vacuum-optimized engines and two more for the fill and drain pipes. The vacuum-optimized engines are attached to unique mounts connected to an internal support structure, enhancing the dome's strength. These mounts are hollow, allowing pipes to pass through, eventually feeding liquid oxygen to the engines. The thrust puck of Starship, a crucial component, is pre-equipped with the mounts and a liquid methane manifold for the center engines. This manifold, positioned at the base of the liquid methane downcomer, distributes fuel evenly to the engines. The liquid methane fill and drain pipe is also an integral part of the system. Above the thrust puck, an additional manifold is installed to distribute liquid methane to the outer vacuum-optimized engines. This manifold is connected to the engines through pipes that are integrated into the support structure. Starship employs a Y-split design for its liquid oxygen distribution, similar to the Super Heavy. This design enables switching between the main tank and the header tank. Manifolds and valves are strategically placed to control the flow of liquid oxygen to the engines. A notable design aspect of Starship is the common liquid oxygen feed for each pair of sea level and vacuum optimized engines. The system ensures a higher flow rate, enabling efficient fueling of the engines. A key component is the main liquid methane downcomer, which, though smaller than super heavies, has added complexity at the top. It connects to the liquid methane distribution hardware with valves and filters installed for efficient operation. Both liquid oxygen and methane header tanks are ingeniously placed at the tip of Starship's nose cone. The liquid oxygen header tank is integrated into the nose cone tip, while the liquid methane header tank is suspended below it. These tanks are crucial for the landing phase and are connected to the spacecraft's propulsion system through insulated pipes. Now, for the sci-fi fans out there, SpaceX is working on something straight out of a movie. 
They're testing this propellant transfer technology. It's a big deal because they need to move super cold fuel from a smaller tank inside Starship to the main tank. This technology isn't just for show. NASA has big plans for it in their human landing systems for the Artemis 3 mission and beyond. The idea is to create a kind of gas station in low Earth orbit, using a bunch of Starship tankers. This space gas station will fuel up the lunar lander Starship for its trips to the moon. On the other hand, SpaceX has some serious competition coming up. Boeing and Lockheed Martin teamed up to create the United Launch Alliance, and they just launched their new Vulcan rocket for the first time. This happened on Monday, and it was pretty exciting. The Vulcan rocket took off from Florida, and it had a moon lander on board. Unfortunately, the lander had some tech issues and couldn't complete its mission, but the launch itself was a big success. Now, you might be wondering, why is this such a big deal? Here's the thing. SpaceX has been the go-to for sending satellites into space for quite some time. Their Falcon 9 rocket is famous for being reusable and pretty cost-effective. But now with Vulcan entering the scene, things are getting interesting. Caleb Henry, a space analyst, mentioned that ULA could seriously challenge SpaceX's dominance if they can start launching rockets frequently and reliably. The Pentagon, which is the headquarters of the United States Department of Defense, is particularly happy about this. They've been wanting more options for sending stuff to space, especially for national security reasons. Michael Lembeck, who's a space consultant and director at the University of Illinois Advanced Space Systems Lab, mentioned that having Vulcan as an option is great. It means if SpaceX ever has a bad day, there's still a reliable way to get important payloads into orbit. The demand for launching satellites is skyrocketing. A lot of countries and companies like Amazon want to put thousands of internet satellites up there. But the options for launches have been limited, especially with Europe facing rocket development delays and Russia's space program being isolated due to the Ukraine conflict. Now, here's a bit about the Vulcan rocket itself. It's pretty impressive. It can have up to six solid rocket motors for extra power. This means it can carry a whole lot of weight into space, up to 60,000 pounds to low Earth orbit to be precise. And while SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets can carry even more, Vulcan is a big step forward for ULA. The development of Vulcan started because of a couple of reasons. Firstly, ULA used to rely on Russian-made engines for their Atlas V rocket, which became a concern after Russia's actions in Crimea in 2014. Secondly, SpaceX's Falcon 9 was offering a cheaper alternative, so ULA had to up their game. Speaking of Atlas V, it's going to retire soon after completing its remaining 17 missions. ULA had already stocked up on the Russian engines before things went south with Russia in 2022. Now, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin is also in the picture. They're supplying the engines for Vulcan and are working on their own powerful rocket called New Glenn. So the space launch industry is really heating up with all these developments. Thanks for watching.